In just four years, all Oregon hospitals are supposed to be seismically safe in case a major earthquake hits our area. But Haley Rush with Fox 12 investigators found not all of them will meet the state's deadline. The law specifically says acute inpatient care facilities, meaning hospital buildings where short-term medical care is provided, should be considered life safe by 2022 as funding is available. Life safe means the building at the very least should remain standing during an earthquake so people can get out. So I spoke with leaders at some of the largest hospitals in our area to find out how many are ready for a major disaster. It's a looming deadline just like the looming Cascadia subduction zone earthquake. The state in 2001 established a deadline for emergency response facilities to be seismically ready by 2022, and that deadline is coming up in four years. Yume Wong, geotechnical engineer at the Oregon Department of Geology and Mineral Industries, means everything from police and fire stations, dispatch centers, and hospitals. It's really important that emergency response facilities are functioning every day, and especially during disasters when there's a great need for them. We decided to look specifically at hospitals to find out where some of the largest are right now when it comes to seismic safety and meeting that 2022 deadline. I think that some of the hospitals will and many of them will not. First, we looked at Providence. According to a 2007 state report, all of Providence hospitals in the Portland area are considered low risk of collapsing. The community depends on us being here, and especially in an earthquake of the magnitude that we're talking about. We could have, you know, casualties, many casualties of, of many types. Nancy Roberts, Chief Operating Officer at Providence St. Vincent Medical Center, says first and foremost, their priority is keeping people inside the hospital safe. At any given time, we have thousands of people on this campus. Um, and of course, you know, somewhere around 400 of them every day are in our hospital beds um, and, and are really not able to to flee in the in the course of, of an event like this. But she says ideally they want to be able to continue operating after a big quake as well. We feel it's our obligation to do all we can to try to be there in those times of crisis for people. Robert says they'll make the state's 2022 deadline and that a lot of the work is already completed. Most is not visible behind walls, but she did show us where columns and beams are covered in carbon fiber wrap like you see here strengthening them. The objective of the work was really to make sure that that 500 year earthquake probability that we would um, be able to recover in that from from that kind of a quake here and continue to operate. As for Providence Portland Medical Center, we're told some of the hospital buildings will make the deadline, others will not. But we're told they'll continue to work towards it as funding becomes available. <laughs> We also looked at OHSU, another hospital that the state's 2007 report says is low risk for collapsing. We have been retrofitting mostly our hospital buildings first, uh, whether it's cross bracing, uh, shear wall installation, beefing up the shoring of foundations. Associate Vice President of Facilities at OHSU, Sky Dancy, says being on a hill has its own challenges, but the hospital recently received a grant from the state that allowed them to purchase their own equipment to clear roads in case a big earthquake causes landslides. When we asked if they'll make the 2022 deadline, Dancy says they're on track to meet it. I think we are well prepared. We're making strong progress towards that goal, and I think there's always more to do. Finally, we looked at Legacy Good Samaritan Meriton Medical Center and Legacy Emanuel Medical Center. Both hospitals have buildings that in 2007 were considered moderate all the way to very high risk of collapsing. So where do they stand now? At Legacy Emanuel, we're told seismic upgrade work began there in 2009. When it comes to the 2022 deadline, we're told not all the projects will be completed in time, but should be shortly after. As for Legacy Good Samaritan, a hospital built back in the 1800s. Craig Kloschus, the facilities manager there, says they are doing work as funding becomes available. We have seismic isolation preventers on all of our generators. When we asked if Good Samaritan will make the deadline. I think we have the ability to continue to meet all the requirements that we are able to do. Um, you know, if we had multiple billion dollars, you know, we could upgrade every single building to the current code, but nobody has billions of dollars. Wong, who has seen the aftermath of big earthquakes firsthand, says she's also seen just how important it is for hospitals to withstand them. Emergency response facilities are the bedrock of communities. You want them to be ready. They're an important safety net.
I should add that deadline says as funding becomes available, meaning it's not a hard and strict deadline, but according to Wong, it is an important one. If you want to see where your hospital stands, you can find a link to the state's 2007 study at kptv.com. Keep in mind that study is more than a decade old, and lots of hospitals have been making changes since then. Reporting in studio, Haley Rush, Fox 12 Oregon.